Hey there, and welcome to your video on indoor air pollutants. This is a review. Please keep in mind as we go through this, this is, with only one major exception, a problem for the developed world. This is not something that we see being an issue for the, in the developing world for a variety of reasons that I will go over. So, do realize that this is a very relevant topic for you because we're all at home indoors right now. So, uh, this is just something kind of to think about. Uh, th this right here is, is unreal. People spend nearly 90% of their time indoors. Uh, there are some studies that say there are some people who spend 98% of their life inside. The only times that they're outside is to get into a closed vehicle to go somewhere else that is enclosed. So, and think about a lot of the places that you go, school for example, where you do not have control over whether or not the, the airspace that you're in has any ability to circulate with the, the larger outside world. Keep in mind, here we are yet again in a situation where the dose makes the poison. Concentrations of these things may, may start out very low, and the things that emit whatever the pollutant is may only emit a tiny amount. But if you are in a closed Tupperware container that does not allow for any of it to escape, eventually the stuff will build up to levels that are problematic. So there are multiple things that are naturally occurring. I'm going to be talking about the developed world first. Two of these things, uh, which is mold and then also in, in a subsequent portion asbestos are things that are not covered in your book, so you're going to want to make sure that you pay attention to those. All right, dust is super easy. Please do realize even something as innocuous as a candle could contain the dust and then also if it happens to have, let's say it's from another country and it's got some lead or some mercury in that wick or in the wax, you could end up inhaling things that you're really not prepared to inhale. Why is this a problem? Because dust can act as a little tiny areas that everything from bacteria to fungi can go ahead and uh, grow and become their own problems as well. Nobody's suggesting that you s devote your entirety of your life to dusting. Uh, but this is why if the adults in your life make you crazy with their once a week cleaning, this is one of the reasons why that's a good idea. And in this case, and in the case of most of the things that we're going to talk about, not all, but most, simply opening up your windows a couple times a week and allowing your house to air out is a great way of reducing this kind of indoor air pollutant. All right, what about mold? Th this appeared on the national exam either last year or the year before. This is caused by a slow, constant drip from leaking pipes and built-up humidity and also warmth. So this is uh, something that builds up over time. Mold spores are with us everywhere if they are in a situation like a leaking pipe in, in the walls. In, in a place where it's warm, you're going to get this mold that builds up. Why is this an issue? Mold releases spores that you can then inhale and they, they can colonize your lungs. Because it's mold and not a bacteria, it means that they're very antibiotic resistant. You have to think that if you have something growing in your lungs, it reduces your lungs' capacity to uptake oxygen. All right, what, what do you have to do to repair it here? You can't simply fix the leak. You've actually got to go in there and kill the mold, and that can involve everything from using bleach to kill it all to simply ripping out the, the pieces of wood that are infected with the mold and putting it back. This is one of the reasons why in hurricane situations where people's air conditionings are knocked out, not only do they have this influx of water, they then don't have the air to dry it out. Part of what makes air conditioning necessary in the state of Florida is not only does it keep you cool, it keeps the inside of your house dry. So when you have those warm, damp conditions, even if you uh, bring that, that air back in, if it still remains damp in between those, uh, in between the, the walls, the outer wall and the inner wall, you can still have that mold growth occurring. So you can, that there are two things you need to be aware of here. You have repairing and you have prevention. The things I just talked about are repair. How do you prevent mold from growing? That is where you need an active ventilation system. Simply opening up windows oftentimes is not enough. You're gonna to need to put in a fan that will 
either push the air out or create a vacuum where it is drawn out into that, that moisture, let's say, in a bathroom, as an example, is drawn out into the outside. Now, do realize a lot of ventilators look like they're doing something when all they're actually doing is recirculating that moisture right back into your bathroom. You want to make sure if you have control over a situation like that, that you go ahead and pull that out. Now, if you are, if you do not have a ventilation system, another way to make sure that that steam evacuates, again, from a place like a bathroom, you want to make sure that you open two areas for the air to flow. You not only open a window, you then also open a door and a window on the other side of that door, so you get that cross circulation kind of blowing that out. So you need to be very familiar with the difference between repairing a problem that's already occurred and preventing it in the first place. Never propose that somebody should simply move out of their house if they have a mold issue. You and I both know that that is not financially possible for a lot of people. That is not a reasonable uh, solution to that particular problem. So again, you want to be able to differentiate between repair and prevent, and you want to be able to propose appropriate solutions. And also know the difference between active ventilation and just passive ventilation where you kind of open a couple windows and hope for the best. All right, so radon gas. Radon gas is produced by the, the the decay of uranium. Uranium is an unstable element and it just falls apart. Of course uranium is very radioactive and part of the falling apart process is it produces radiation that ends up staying in that gas. Now you may be looking here and saying, Miss, why is this a problem? It has a half-life of four days. A half-life, remember, is how long does it take for half of whatever you have to no longer be radioactive. It doesn't disappear, it just simply is no longer radioactive. Well, the problem is that this stuff keeps being emitted and because this is really heavy, it just builds up wherever it ends up seeping out and it just stays there. So, uh, and, and radiation does not dissipate, so it just kind of hangs out. So, how does this get into people's houses? Through, in general, cracks in the foundation. Here in the state of Florida, we don't have a problem with radon. Number one, we don't have a lot of radon in our, in our ground. And number two, we don't have basements. In places where you do have basements, so you have this lower level right next to the bedrock, crack in the foundation, uh, this radon gas builds up. It's not rising because it's really heavy. It just kind of, you know, you, you, you squeeze the Capri Sun, the, the, the juice is going to come out the, the straw. So it just kind of builds up in, in the basement because it continues to flow and the rate, even when the radon breaks down, the radiation's still around. The radiation can then build up to levels that are problematic. And what do I mean by problematic? Radon gas is the second leading cause of lung cancer in the United States behind cigarette smoking. Now, we in Florida don't escape this completely. Uh, there are some granite countertops that do have a little bit of uranium in them, so they do emit low levels of radiation again. Uh, but because those are up high, that is a case where you can have some uh, passive ventilation where you just open windows uh, to, to get rid of that. Now, the, 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 way to, the, the way to prevent this from happening is you have to seal, make sure your cracks in your foundation are sealed, and then make sure that you install a active ventilation system. Radon gas is really heavy, so you have to have an actual system that's kind of like a vacuum cleaner that sucks the gas and, and lets it go outside. Now, is it still radioactive out there? Sure but it mixes with the entirety of the atmosphere out there so that it is at such low levels that it is not a problem. Um, also, side note, not only are you building up to a certain concentration, you have to be exposed to this stuff over time uh, in order for it to cause lung cancer. I know I just threw a lot of stuff at you. You can also see that radon can get into water, which is also, you know, a problem. Now, the, the other way that you have to fix this is if you have let's say uh, furniture that's become radioactive, you've got to throw it away. If you've got uh, walls that have become radioactive, you have to rip those out and repair them. Not you, you need somebody who is actually in appropriate care to keep them from uh, absorbing the radiation into their system. So uh, another thing to do is if you're ever concerned about this, there are radon alarms that will go off when they reach a level that is not great for you. So as well as having a carbon monoxide alarm in your house, uh, a radon alarm 
especially in areas where radon is known to seep up from the foundation. Good idea. Okay, again, know the difference between prevention and, um, and treatment. Okay, so again, there's all of this. All right, we talked about how to fix this. That's what an active uh, ventilation system looks like. All right, so anthropogenic. Here's where we get into asbestos. Asbestos is a naturally occurring element that is was harvested and used for insulation. Even in Roman times, it was noticed that it kept the hot things hot and the cold things cold. That doesn't mean that it knows the temperature of what it's dealing with. It simply acts as a barrier to heat transfer. All right, so uh, if it is inhaled, it leads to asbestosis, which is permanent lung scarring, which is a reduction of lung function. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, so how do you fix it? Number one way you can fix asbestos problems is to simply seal up where it is and leave it alone. Why is that preferable over taking it out of somebody's house? It is incredibly what's called friable. That means that it crumbles into little bits if you look at it the wrong way. So that means that the folks who have to go in here to get rid of it have to be just completely bundled up as you can see here so that they don't breathe any of it in. And there's still the possibility that through this process you're going to leave enough airborne particles for it to be problematic. Now again, you can't have just somebody move out of their house. You also can't prevent get a spell well they shouldn't have built it within the first place well you know now we know we didn't know back in the 40s and 50s as an example so this is an incredibly it's even worse than mold for you to try and and get rid of without the appropriate protective equipment it's really better to figure out where the asbestos is coming from just seal that whole area up and just tell people do not go in there uh, another anthropogenic source of indoor uh, air pollution is, so that would be a particulate, by the way, if you're wondering why a solid is an air pollution, is lead from paint and then uh, vox that build up over time. This is why I really recommend that when you bring home dry cleaning, you don't keep it in the bag and then eventually open it in your closet because then you're just having formaldehyde build up in this tiny little area with no windows. Open your dry cleaning outside as you're walking from your car to your house and then that way a lot of the formaldehyde can kind of dissipate before you bring it inside. Lead makes uh, colors brighter which is why it is used in all sorts of paint. Why is this an issue? Older homes have a lot of lead-based paint in it and as we've talked about before this is especially problematic for kids who like to peel at it and some of it can become particulate and they breathe it in it's more likely that they actually eat the paint chips because that's just what kids do. Formaldehyde again is if that new car smell is partially formaldehyde. It's not good for you. All right, this is more prevalent. This is more of a prevalent problem in developing countries where you cook over a, a stove that is powered by biomass and where you do not have adequate ventilation. Remember, you don't always, why would you not want a chimney as an example? you're living in a developing country. Well, that is an area that rain can come in, animals from the outside can come in, other people can come in. It, it is a chink in your armor, as it were. It also may be that the, these are places where you don't have enough breeze to go ahead and create that cross breeze, which is what chimneys do, to to draw the, the, the smoke out of your, your house. It, it, a chimney is not just a straw that you poke into someone's house and you hope for the best. There's a thing in there called a flu that it, it by that angle, by, by making the, the, the area that the air goes through smaller, when you have a breeze on the outside, you create a vacuum to draw it out. It's, it's you're creating active ventilation. Uh, simply having an opening to the outside doesn't always work. Anybody who's ever burned something inside their house and then opened up the windows only to have the fire alarm wail at you for another five minutes more understands this. You have to create some sort of active uh, draw, active wind as it were, to, to make the, the smoke go outside. Now you do also notice that tobacco smoke, that is both a developing and a developed country problem. Smoking, as we all know, is, is bad for you, and this does include vaping. How can you keep this 
from furthering impacting you and more importantly impacting everyone else do it outside not even once inside ever uh, not that I'm endorsing smoking it seems something really dumb to waste your money on um, okay so again we, we talked about all of this the poor suffer suffer the greatest risk because they have the least resources they don't have the ability to buy a high efficiency little stove that will uh, burn things more completely thereby creating less carbon monoxide and less ash uh, they're not spoiled but they can't just run out and get an electric stove to plug in where uh, that's that's not going to happen and remember although you can use things like solar ovens to cook things slow and low over a long period of time that doesn't work when you have things that require a high heat in order to uh, cook them thoroughly and then also uh, sometimes to kill any parasites that are a part of that food so you can see here deaths from indoor smoke uh, uh, lines up pretty uh, well with developing countries. Now, this is also a developed country problem for folks who do not realize incomplete combustion uh, produces carbon monoxide. We've seen this here in the state of Florida. People who have generators will bring them into their house because they don't want them stolen and they end up poisoning themselves because of the carbon monoxide that's produced during incomplete combustion. Remember again, small animals and children will suffer more from indoor air pollution than adults will because if you're producing, let's say, a cup of pollution, there's less kid for that cup of pollution, which means the concentration is higher than if you gave that same cup of pollution to an adult. So maybe carbon monoxide poisoning would only make an adult sick, but it would kill a kid in the same household. All right, so uh, we talked about this. We also have a lot of laws that regulate the quality of the air outside your house, but none that regulate the air inside of your house. And we have become a, a people that doesn't go outside very much. All right, sick building syndrome. Again, this is a, a cluster of symptoms that can come from a variety of different things interacting with ways, it, interacting in ways that we haven't really fully defined quite yet. And remember again, whenever you have something that increases upper, uh, increases lung irritation, you are also opening those people up to secondary infections because uh, there are now chinks in that armor for uh, let's say bacteria and viruses to get through. So how can we pr uh, lower the risk of indoor air pollution? This is where humanitarian aid can include things like uh, stoves that burn things more efficiently. Now think about another byproduct of that. If you have a stove that burns hotter with less fuel, it means that you have to spend less of your time harvesting firewood and then that also means that you are harvesting less of the forest in order to do the things that you do every day um, so that also can increase safety especially for women and then here you can also see a chimney has been installed with an oven system I'm assuming there's some sort of the ventilation system that is drawing that out so then you have no longer have smoke in the house okay what can you do in a developed country? Save for something like radon. Just open your house. Do not bring things into the house which have uh, these chemicals in them. Uh, opt for instead of carpet that has a lot of uh, vox in it, opt for more natural materials like let's say bamboo or opt for a tile floor instead. Tile floors are also going to harbor less dust it's easier for you to kind of clean up uh, use as low impact chemicals cleaning your house as you possibly can as, as we're learning things like soap and water and a little bit of bleach and a lot of water and baking soda and lemon juice and vinegar are all things that can be used to really effectively clean your house you don't need a hammer for every problem that you have in your home uh, so anyway, just kind of take a look at this. Are you going to be expected to be able to comment on all of this stuff? No. Pick a couple of things that resonate with you and tuck those away in your head. And that is the end of our indoor air pollution video.